Hello everyone. In this video we will discuss about stem cells. So in this video we are going to look at what are stem cells and what do they do, sources of stem cells, types of stem cells, their uses, stem cells used in medicine and donating or harvesting stem cells challenges in stem cell research. So what are stem cells? Stem cells are special human cells that are able to develop into many different cell types. So the question arises how they are different from other body cells. So in our body there are two mainly our normal cells and stem cells. Normal cells have specific purposes but stem cells do not yet have specific role and can become almost any cell that is required. So if they do not have any specific role in our body, so why they are present in the body? So a person body contains stem cells throughout their life from the time an embryo develops. The body can use these stem cells whenever it needs them. Needs them. It means in cases of regeneration. So, for example, day-to-day -day living means the body is constantly re renewing its tissues. In some parts of the body, such as the gut and bone marrow, stem cells regularly divide to produce new body tissues for maintenance and repair. So, it, the second sentence tells us that it can means stem cells can become almost any cell that is required that is required means these are the reserve of undifferentiated cells so differentiated and undifferentiated cells what they are so differentiated cells carry only one type of cells and thus their function whereas they are able to able to be divided into different elements and types that are undifferenti undifferentiated stem cells. Now we'll see types of stem cells. Researchers categorize stem cells according to their potential to differentiate into other types of cells, that is, unipotent, oligopotent, multipotent, pluripotent, and totipotent. Now we'll see the terminologies and their meaning. Unipotent means these cells can only produce cells of one kind, which is their own type. For example, adult muscle stem cells. Oligopotent stem cells means they can differentiate into a few different cell types. For example, adult lymphoid or myeloid stem cells. Multipotent stem cells differentiate into a closely related families of cells, for example, hematopoietic stem cells. Pluripotent stem cells can turn into almost any cell, for example, cells from the early embryo are pluripotent. And totipotent means they are differentiated into all possible cell types. So, why scientists and doctors are more interested in stem cells? Because they help, that is stem cells help to explain how some functions of the body work and how they sometimes go wrong. In some cases, they, they can also fix damaged tissues. Stem cells also show promise for treating some diseases that currently have no cure. For example, neurodegenerative diseases and more prevalent diseases are paralysis and alzheimer disease because nerve cells do not regenerate or divide because there is absence of centrioles in the nerve cells and because of this they are unable to perform mitosis and meiosis and hence these cells do not divide from where we will get stem cells from the body so there are two main sources from we will get stem cells from adult body tissue or embryos so scientists are also working on the ways to develop stem cells from other cells using genetic reprogramming techniques so 
adult body tissues from where we will get stem cells also called as tissue specific or somatic stem cells these stem cells are in non specific state they are in tissues and more specialized than embryonic stem cells for example skin or muscle cells there are also two types of this that one comes from few fully developed tissues and others is induced pluripotent stem cells these are adult stem cells that have been changed in a lab to be more like embryonic stem cells and the second source is embryos scientists call these totipotent cells they have total potential to develop into any cell in the body they can differentiate into more cell types than adult stem cells these are considered pluripotent instead of totipotent because they cannot become part of the extra embryonic membranes or the placenta embryonic stem cells are more potent as their job is to become every type of cell in the body so how scientists take stem cells from embryos from so they take it from in vitro fertilization that is ivf so these are usually extra embryos in ivf clinics the doctors fertilize several eggs in a test tubes as shown in right figure to ensure at least one survives they will then implant a limited number of eggs to start a pregnancy when a sperm fertilize an egg these cells combine to form a single cell called a zygote zygote then starts to divide forming 2 4 8 or 16 cells and so on now it is an embryo soon and uh, before the embryo implants in the uterus this mass of around 150 to 200 cells is the blastocyst this blastocyst consists of two parts that is outer cell mass and inner cell mass so outer cell mass becomes part of placenta which is embryonic where this embryonic stem cells are mainly found and inner cell mass develops into human body other sources of stem cells that is mesenchymal stem cells and induced pluripotent stem cells mesenchymal stem cells come from the connective tissue or stroma that surrounds the body's organ and other tissues scientists have used mesenchymal stem cells to create new body tissues such as bone cartilage and fat cells induced pluripotent stem cells scientists create this in a lab using skin cells and other tissue specific cells these cells be behave in a similar way to embryonic stem cells to grow stem cells scientists first extract samples from adult tissue or an embryo they then place these cells in a controlled culture where they will divide and reproduce but not specialize further until now it has been easier to grow large number of embryonic stem cells than adult stem cells however scientists are making progress with both cell types so next question is in what types of tissue stem cells are present so stem cells are present in the brain bone marrow bone and blood vessels skeletal muscles skin and the liver they can generate various cell cell types from the originating organ or even regenerate the original organ entirely so they can generate various cell types for example skin wounds skin wound heals so they can generate this various cells to in order to heal this wound and they can generate entirely original organ it means for example liver can repair itself after damage so uses of stem cells first is tissue regeneration by instructing stem cells to differentiate in a certain way scientists could use them to grow a specific tissue type or organ doctors have already used stem cells from just beneath the skin surface to make new skin tissue they can then repair a severe burn or another injury by grafting this tissue onto the damaged skin and new skin will 
grow back. Second use of stem cells in the treatment of cardiovascular diseases. In 2013, a team of researchers from Massachusetts General Hospital reported in PNAS early edition that they had created blood vessels in a laboratory mice using stem cells. Within two weeks of implanting the stem cells, networks of blood perfused vessels had formed. The quality of these new blood vessels was as good as the nearby natural ones. Next use of stem cells in the treatment of brain diseases. Scientists could use stem cells to replenish the damaged brain tissue. Researchers have already tried differentiating embryonic stem cells into these types of cells, so treatments are promising. Next use of stem cells in the cell deficiency therapy. People with type 1 diabetes could receive pancreatic cells to replace the insulin producing cells that their own immune systems have lost or destroyed. Next use of stem cells in the treatment of blood diseases. Doctors now routinely use adult stem cells that is hematopoietic stem cells to treat diseases such as leukemia, sickle cell anemia and other immunodeficiency problems. So, next question arises is about donating or harvesting stem cells. So, donation of stem cells can come from the following sources that is bone marrow, peripheral stem cells and umbilical cord blood. Bone marrow, these are taken under a general anesthetic usually from the hip or pelvic bone. Peripheral stem cells. A person receives several injections that cause their bone marrow to release stem cells into the blood. Next, blood is removed from the body. A machine separates out 